Things are so difficult in my life now because of how big I let myself become. To where doing everything is a chore for me. My weight pulls on me and causes pain all over. My arms hurt, my legs hurt, everything hurts on my body. My back hurts tremendously. And it makes it very difficult to do what I need to do now, which is very scary for me because I live alone. And the struggle I'm having is starting to stop me from taking care of myself. Even with basic things such as getting myself clean, because I can't reach all my foes. I just don't have the ability at times because of the pain and the fatigue that I have, and it terrifies me. It terrifies me to know that my body is starting to shut down and starting to decline because I'm so young and I should be able to do all this stuff by myself. But if I start to need help, I don't know what I'm going to do because there's no one to help me with this. I have no one. So no matter how hard it is, I do it myself. But it takes me maybe a good 20 to 30 minutes to do it. So I'm getting to a really bad place to where my size is affecting my life at this point. But I know the problem behind that is my eating. That's why I'm like this. But it's something I've never been able to control in my life because food is my go-to drug. At any time there's food around me, I can't help myself because I am addicted to food. I can't stop, food is an addiction. Everybody has their addiction of choice. Mine just so happen to be food. It's what I use to get me through all my struggles in life. No matter if it's sadness, depression, being bored, being by myself, any of those things will trigger me to go eat so that I make myself feel better. Because when I eat, I feel complete joy. And when I stop and the food is gone, I'm back to that dark cold. It's been about two weeks since my first appointment with Dr. Now. You know, right after, I struggled some from being frustrated because I didn't get the surgery I needed when I know I'm ready for it. But once I got home and I took everything in, I read all the paperwork he gave me, I was like, look, I can do this. What up, what up, what up? You ready to eat? Yeah, I'm ready for lunch. I'm quick. All right. So I've been making adjustments to lose the 20 pounds I need to show Dr. Dow an example of my hard work. I've made dramatic changes. I don't eat fast food anymore. I don't eat fried foods anymore. And I've always made sure I have the food I like around me, and I still have stashes around my house, I'm not gonna lie. But I haven't touched them. And I feel myself getting better with that, you know? My body is changing in ways I never thought it was able to do. And I feel like the exercise is helping me too, because I'm moving around as much as I can. So I'm following everything Dr. Now gave me to follow, and I'm feeling really good. You want me to get you my ranch or no? No, it's okay, I'm good. The good thing about salad, you can have as much as you want, so. But I'm not, I feel like a rabbit. And so my hope is that this time, you know, when I go back in two weeks, he takes me more serious, and he improves me for surgery because I need it, and I'm more than ready for it. At my last appointment, I had dropped drastically to 486, and my weight loss goal I was given was to lose 20 pounds. So I should be at 466 for that. Thank you. I feel like that's a good drop. Really good. So 
So I feel happy about that number because it means it's coming down. So it makes me happy because I've been putting in a lot of work. So it's good to see the number because it's actually coming off. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm making progress. So hopefully Dr. Now sees that too. And sees how serious I am and approves me for surgery today. Hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing okay, so how have you been? I've been great. All right, so you lost uh, like 10 pounds? Yes, sir. Uh, that's not as much as you should have. So tell me what kind of changes you made in your eating habits. I stopped eating out like you told me to. Okay. I stopped drinking soda. Okay. And now I'm cooking and I'm doing the paper that you gave me. Mm -hmm. I've been following all the stuff that I'm working out now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get you to see a therapy, see if we can work with you on some things. So I want you to start that. I know you don't think you need it, but it's going to be part of this process if you want to do this. So do you think you can do that? Yes, sir. All right, any questions? No, sir. Okay, you don't eat two or three times a day, no soda, uh, no sugary thing, no carb. And then I want you to lose 40 pounds over the next two months, okay? Yes, sir. So that's the same amount you should be losing in a month. But I want you to show me some consistency with that, too. Okay. Unfortunately, Ashley doesn't seem to be taking her situation as seriously as she says. I gave her a very modest goal that should have been more than easy for her to accomplish. Ashley has spent a significant part of her life pretending to be things she isn't as a means of manipulation to get what she wants. There is no reason this situation is going to be any different for her. So until that changes, we're not going to be able to make much, if any, progress with her. I'm disappointed. I'm not going to lie, because I was hoping for weight loss surgery. And being told I need to go to therapy, that's frustrated me some. So it's hard to hear that I'm still not getting surgery because I know I deserve the surgery. But I do feel like I stay respectful even when Dr. Now was negative about things. Today I'm going to see a doctor in Houston who helps people my size. And I didn't hardly sleep at all last night thinking about going to the doctor and what's he going to say. I need help so bad, and I'm scared he's going to tell me something I don't want to hear. And I'm not sure exactly what the scale is going to say when I step on it today, because it's a number that always is going to scare me being this big. Mr. Statham? It's just hard to be here and find out what I'm about to find out. But whatever the doctor tells me, I have to make it work, because this is my last chance to get my life back. 6.55. It really sucks. 6.55 is the most I've ever weighed. And it's upsetting to me that I let myself get to this point in my life. Hello. Hello. I'm Dr. Nazarda. Nice to meet you. You're Randy, huh? Yes, sir. So you're 655 pounds. What is the highest weight you have been? This is it. So what are your eating habits like? Throughout the day, just... Just snacking and then having like big meal and then I'll snack during the day or something like that. What do you snack on? Candy bars or stuff like that. So who buys them? Usually me. Or unless I ask my mom or dad to pick me something up on the way home. You live in a house with uh, how many people? Eleven. Eleven people? Eleven total. How many of them are overweight? Uh, you see us. Plus three and one more of overweight. So you live in the household of unhealthy eating. So it's going to be very hard for you to stick to a low calorie diet if nobody else is eating that way. Yes. This is a very unusual dynamic with Randy. Despite the fact that he is on track to be 700 pounds soon, he's still able to get around. So he's getting food for himself along with his enablers. He needs to start taking responsibility for his own eating habits. Randy, let me tell you something. You're not too far from being 700 pounds, then 800 pounds. Your body cannot last much longer like this. You have to get your weight under control. I'm ready. I've come to a 
time in my life. I've had a daughter, so I'm, I want to be there for her to live. And okay. I'm just ready to change. Randy has a great motivation. He wants to lose weight for his daughter, but he should have started this on his own already. Being in a house with so many people, there's always going to be a lot of food around. We need to start with him taking personal responsibility for his eating habits. This is all going to have to rest on Randy, and he needs to get well enough to get out on his own. Three things control your eating habit. Frequency eating, amount, and type of food. Now, eventually, surgery is going to work on this part, which is amount. But it would not do anything for frequency of eating and type of the food. So you got to have the handle on those two issues, OK? So how much does he have to lose before he can have the surgery? I want him to lose 40 pounds in one month. Then we'll see if you're healthy enough for weight loss surgery, OK? You want to be there for your daughter? This is your chance. You think you can do it? Yes, sir. All right. It was good to meet you. Thank Appreciate you. it. He says no sugar, no candy, cookies, cake. It's going to be a big change. We'll do it. We're behind you. The doc wants me to lose 40 pounds, so that's what I'm going to do. Surgery is my last chance for a new life. If I don't get it, it's game over for me. I've been trying to do a lot to help me lose the weight I need to lose. I can barely keep up, and I have a ways to go, but it's a good start. I'm willing to push myself to keep going. If it means I have a chance to be with my daughter again. It's done, the food's done. I've also gone over the doctor's whole diet plan, and it's a big adjustment because there's a lot of stuff that I want to eat that I can't eat now. The rest of the family's having macaroni and rice. I just made the decision not to have it anymore. I know we eat junk in front of him, and it's hard. I know it is, but he's doing really well. He acts like he feels better. So if he feels better, I feel better. I've also been staying away from all the candy and desserts. It's like any sport. You have to put in the effort if you want to win. And I don't want to miss my chance to get the surgery. Randy Stater. The doc told me I had to lose 40 pounds and hit 615 for him to prove me for surgery. And I feel like I've worked as hard as I can to do that. Thank God. I'm super excited right now. Okay, we're gonna go to room five. Okay. I pushed myself hard to see that number today, and I'm very proud of myself. I can't wait to see what the doctor has to say. Hey, all doing? All right. So you lost uh, 42 pounds, huh? Yes, sir. You changed your eating habit, and this is working for you. The good news is that you show me you can do this. The bad news is there are some issues that concern me from the test result that we did last time you were here. So we need to repeat the EKG and see how your health is doing. I'll be back. All right. Randy made good progress over the last month, but he's been over 600 pounds for so long that he's developing significant health issues that are life-threatening to him. So we need to do some more evaluation before we approve him for surgery. All right. Your test actually show you have a little bit enlarged heart, and EKG show some strain in your heart. What well, caused that and why? When you get bigger, your heart enlarges to pump blood in a body your size. This enlargement of the heart will weaken it until it gets too weak and you have heart failure. The big issue is your heart is too weak to be under anesthesia right now. So we need to reverse this situation. 
first step is to take the load out of the heart by losing weight as much as possible. As long as you continue to lose weight, your heart will be okay. But you have to get this issue resolved immediately. My whole body hurt and I gross. Almost six hours, five and a half hours, and I'm still driving. He should be here. Come with I hope he's going to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what you're talking about. Uh, Devon called about an hour ago to tell me that Latanya has bad leg pain again. Last time she came down, she complained about that. And we checked her out, and nothing severe was wrong with her. This time, she says the pain is even worse to the point that she thinks she might pass out. So I told her to come to the hospital so we can check her out. Hello, how you doing? I'm tired, I'm hurting. Come here. I'm following you. All right, come on. As far as I can tell that she's having a lot of pain and shortness of breath, and she thinks that her legs are hurting because lymphedema is swollen. But looking at her just from the past, we cannot tell if there is anything seriously wrong with her. So we're going to bring her in the hospital and see what's going on. I can do it. Okay. Huh? And the witness helping. You're not having chest pain or anything, huh? Short as a breath. Short of okay. We're looking to monitor and get some blood work done. <laughs> And we gotta see what's going on with you, okay? Okay. I don't doubt she has some swelling and discomfort in her legs and feet. But that is because she's probably over 600 pounds. And that is taking a toll on her body. You see my legs? They hurt. My ankles are red and pink, purple. Yeah, lymphedema mass is uh, pretty much the same, huh? It's a little worse now. I think the issue with her leg pain is more about deflecting again from the fact she hasn't made the progress she needs. And she knows that, so she's using other issues to try to distract from that again, to try to avoid facing the situation. But with the state of her body and the strain she still has on it, there could be other issues we need to address with her. So we run some tests and check her out to see what state her body is in. And we will also get her weight and see if she has made any progress over the last few months. Hello. Hi. How y'all doing? Hi. How are you doing? All right. Well, Natanya, how everything is going with you? Pretty bad. Well, I know we got you in the hospital to lose some weight, and you go home and you start gaining again. So what's with that? I, I don't, I'm not going to say that. I think that it may be the lymphedema. I don't know now. But I really have, like, cut down on um, the the sweetening, the drinks, and, like a lot of stuff that I used to do. I cut down on it, but like with the exercising and stuff, I haven't been able to do none of that from the pain and stuff. It's not lymphedema. It is your eating habit and you have not been able to change that and you're expecting something magically change that, that's not gonna happen. I'm not expecting magic, because if I was expecting magic, I wouldn't be here with you. No, right? no, no. Uh, look, you can tell yourself you're not looking for a magic solution. 
but you keep saying that you're going to do something, but you never do it. Can we agree that your weight has to do with what you eat? Yeah. Okay. And if you eat less, you're going to lose weight. Okay. And if you don't understand any part of the diet, you should understand eat less. That is an issue that we go over and over with you. And every time you come back, we gain a few pounds. So this is not working. And I don't know what else to do to get through to you at this point. Because some element of control has to come from you. So far, that hasn't happened. And we cannot get you to take that step. So when are you going to do that? No. So what is different this time from the last time you told me now, from the time before you told me it's going to change, from the time before you told me it's going to change? Just coming here and looking at the scale and just seeing that, like, in reality, like, you got one foot in the grave and one foot out. Like, this is the deadline. This is it. And repeatedly, we have been with you explaining the diet, what to eat, what not to eat, how many times to eat. How many calories? But you don't do any of it. You don't follow any of the direction I gave you. So at this point, there is nothing more I can do for you. And I'm not going to set up another appointment for you. If you want to wake up and change your eating habit and lose at least 60 pounds to show me that, then let me know. And we'll set an appointment to get your weight check in the Shreveport to see. Because there is no point in you coming down here anymore and going to the motions when it is clear that you're not going to change at all. But unless that happens, then we are done. Okay? Okay. Have a nice trip back home. Okay. Thank you. I feel like a boomerang. Mm -hmm. I can just keep going in circles. I've been here before. At this point, there is nothing more we can do for LaTanya. It's been going on over six years since she first came to me for help. And aside from a short period of time, we put her on a controlled diet in the hospital. She hasn't lost any weight. And over the last eight months, we have given her every tool and opportunity we can, and nothing we have done has made any difference with her. We provided her with a diet and exercises to follow, with a physical therapist to get her out of her chair, and a dietitian and psychotherapist to also help her, and none of it has been enough to get her to start doing what she needs. I don't know if Dr. Now is going to remember me. But if he does, I'm worried that he's not going to take me seriously. But I know my life depends on losing weight. But I'm ready to do whatever it takes this time to make sure that that happens. So I just hope that I get another chance from him. Latanya. So I'm really worried about how much weight I didn't gain. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Excuse mm -hmm. me. <sighs> you saying on that? I think this is the one. I will go on. That's the skill. I know. You got to get on it. I know. It's going to be hard for me. Are you ready to step up? Not really. Let me know. I ain't here about it right here. <laughs> this is a difficult moment for me. Take this sweat off. I need no extra pounds. Wait, is 6.32? <clears throat> 
I'm not too happy with that, but it could have been worse. At least it's not something more extreme. Tawan, can you move that jacket for me? But I know I'm heavier than I was last time I was here. OK. Well, we're going to go to room five. OK. And Dr. Now probably is going to bring it up. My legs swole so bad. And they hurt, and they want me to do all this They hurt. But hopefully he sees how ready I am to do this and change so I can get my life back. I know you're tired. Oh, no. You're tired. Jeez, Emma. Tired. I know. I'm tired, too. I'm just ready to get this over with. I'm tired of being fit. Hello, how y'all doing? How you doing? Good. So, Natanya, good to see you again. Yes, sir. So, you brought someone new with you this time. And who is this young man with you? This is my fiance, Dewan. All right, nice to meet you, Dewan. Well, Natanya, it says here in the chart that you came in five years ago when you were 482 pounds. And now you're 631 pounds. And how long have you been in this motorized wheelchair? About five years. OK. So things have gotten worse for you. So now how motivated you are to change your eating habit, how motivated you to change your life, and how motivated you are to give up this motorized wheelchair? I'm very motivated. So no. what are you willing to do? I'm willing to make a change. That's why I came here. Well, you came here before, and you were given a chance to make those changes. And in the past five years, you haven't made those changes. What is different today? Tell me. Because I finally have a great support system with my family. Like, I never just really just reached out to my family. And I always tried to do it on my own. And I recently just reached out to them and told them to support me. They really came through. And then, like, meeting him coming into my life has been a change because I know that he loved me, loved me. Like, I don't have to question it. So I just look forward to losing this weight because I want to get married. I want to have my own child, like, and start my own family and be normal. All right. So you know what normal weight for you should be? What is what I should with my height? What is it? 160, 170. Now, can you close your eyes and imagine you're 170 pounds? You'd be by my side. Yeah. And, you know, you have BMI of over 100, and normal BMI is 18 to 25, and that's very high BMI. And as young as you are, your body has been able to handle that. But that's going to change here soon. And you keep gaining like you have. All that weight is going to put a lot of strain in your system. You're not going to live that long. OK, so it's going to be a challenge for you to get your weight down, but you don't have any more time to waste, Latonia. So the changes have to start now. And after the diet, the most important thing is to get out of that wheelchair. People that are in motorized wheelchair, they have a really tendency to do everything in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So you need to get out of that chair. So we will set you up some physical therapy to help you do that. OK. So tell me, what does your eating habit look like? When you usually wake up and when you usually start eating? Um, I wake up at like 10.30. Um, I may eat breakfast at like 12 o'clock. What do you usually eat? Bacon, eggs, um, grits. Are you hungry in the morning? Mm -mm. No, sir. But if you're not hungry, you don't have to eat. But the doctor told me that if I don't eat, then my metabolism is is high or low or something like that. Okay, let me tell you one thing. Everybody gonna confuse you, but you should never get confused about the one thing: eat less. Yes. Okay. There's no confusion with that. Okay. Now. If you really put the math together, you have eaten the food that belongs for next four years ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you have to eat. Mm -hmm. OK? I got you. So if you are 600 pounds, you can easily lose um, 60, 70 pounds a month. Yeah? Yeah. 
So how much weight do you think I would have to lose before you approve me for surgery? Well, I'm going to give you a month, and I want to lose at least 40 to 50 pounds in one month. So if you stick to the diet I gave you, that shouldn't be a problem for you. You think you can do that? I can do it. All right, great. Thank you. This is going to be hard, but nobody says it's going to be easy. You have to be determined, and you have to be motivated. We're going to give you instruction, but it's all going to be up to you to follow those. I gave you that before, but then you never came back. So hopefully this time it's different. Yes, sir. Okay? So I'm going to bring you some stuff and then go over it, and then we're going to see how you're doing in four weeks and whether you lost 40 pounds or not, okay? And if you do that, then we're going to work with you. All right. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. Right. Thank you.